Hi everyone, I am Chris Niabanyas from PSB and I'm Chris here. So, for today's video, we're gonna talk about John Wallace. John Wallace was the most influential English mathematician before Isaac Newton. John Wallace was contributed to the development of infinitesimal calculus. John Wallace was the man behind infinite symbol. If you want to know more about John Wallace, just keep watching on the video. John Wallace, an Arden clergyman of the Church of England, he worked on more than math as he specialized in English grammar, theology, and music theory as well. He entered the University of Cambridge and received BA and MA degrees in 1637 and 1640 respectively. In his college days, also he was continuously involved with the Parliamentarian Party until the span of his life. He was the chief of cryptographer with the Royal, royal Court who encoded the decoded messages. He started developing his skills in mathematics after he started working at the Parliament. He moved to London in 1649. He wanted to start a serious interest in mathematics. Now, let's move forward to his contribution in mathematics. Wallace made significant to the contribution to trigonometry, calculus, and analysis of infinite series. In 1994, Wallace was appointed as a field professor of geometry at the University of Oxford, a position he held 54, 54 years until his death. In Mathematical 1, 1695, he introduced the term continued fraction. He is generally credited as the originator of the idea of the number line. In 1656, in the Sectionibus Conicis, the Conic section, Wallace published his discovery of algebraic formulas for the parabola ellipse of hyperbola. This was a significant advance on the groundbreaking work of Frame Descartes, which showed geometrical line and shapes could be translated into algebraic formulas in La Geometry in 1637. In his prominent work, Treatise on the Conic Sections, the symbol of infinity was introduced. He was active in weekly scientific meetings that led to forming the Royal Society of London by the Charter of King Charles II in 1662. Wallace's Arithmetica Infinitorum, Infinitesimal Arithmetic, published in 1656, was his greatest mathematical work. Wallace's Arithmetica Infinitorum was a vital stage in the development of integral calculus and highly influential. In 1665, at the age of 22, Isaac Newton generalized Wallace's work to make his first great discovery, the Generalized Binomial Theorem. Newton copy of Arithmetica Infinitorum with his own comments in the margin still exist. Now, let's move forward to Wallace's product. One of the interesting results from Arithmetica Infinitorum is known as the Wallis product. In modern terms, Wallis studies the integral. For odd and even and to show but not prove rigorously that pi could be expressed as an infinite product. This was only the second time pi had been expressed as an infinite product. Francois Piotti achieved the first instance in 1593. Trailblazer John Wallace introduced two symbols that the math world continues to use until today, to denote infinity and to denote greater than or equal to. An interesting fact about John Wallace is that these books is considered as the first English textbooks that dealt with more than just the math, it talked about the history of mathematics as well. Wallace, a polymath born one generation before Isaac Newton, discovered the concept of, conser of conservation of momentum, one of physics' most independable concepts. In 1670 and 1671, Wallace published in three parts, Mechanica Civi de Motu, Tractatus Geometricus, the geometrical treatment of the mechanics of motion, correctly describing momentum conservation and collisions the one of Europe's greatest code breaker. Apart from solving equation, Wallace found pleasure in this comparing code. Apart from solving equation, Wallace found pleasure in this comparing codes. He is the one of Europe's greatest code breaker. As he mastered code breaking, what once was a hobby turned into real work. During the Civil War, he decoded royalist message for the parliamentarians a favor that vastly improved his career. In March 1645, he married to Sanaglide at the age of 28. Several of their children, 
died in the infancy, he was survived by his three children and three grandchildren. John Wallis died at the age of 86 in Oxford, November 8, 1703. He was buried at the University Church of St. Mary the Virgin in Oxford. So that's all everyone. I hope you gained knowledge from me and that's a little bit introduction of John Wallis. I hope you learned something. You have a insight about John Wallis. If you want to know more about John Wallis, you can search it. Okay, so bye-bye.